Welcome students uh, to uh, Legacy IA's uh, class on culture and uh, today we are doing a very important topic on temple architecture. If uh, you have been uh, <coughs> following uh, the question papers of UPSC prelims for the past 3-4 years, so continuously uh, questions have been coming on uh, the temple architecture. So uh, we aim to do all the architectural details of all important temples uh, in the country uh, in the next uh, few classes. So welcome everybody, my name is Hitesh Reddy and uh, today uh, we are starting the topic uh, on uh, the Rashtrakuta temples and we will be doing this uh, Kailashnath uh, temple at uh, Elora. So you can see the structure here, so uh, it's an image uh, which I have given there. So uh, one thing what we can analyze on this image is this is definitely a rock cut temple. The point here is uh, there are <coughs> two uh, uh, different theories which the archaeologists say because this is the world's largest monolithic rock cut temple. And usually, see if this is the rock, the temple is carved from the down. That is how these rock cut temples have been made. So rock cut temples, you can also call them as a freestanding temple, which is carved out of one single rock. And these freestanding temples, uh, if you see even the, the Guptas had, uh, uh, were very famous in their freestanding temples. But the most attractive uh, part of this particular temple is it was not cut from the down, it was cut from the top which is actually considered as a very very impossible task to do. But although the rock was cut from the top, its architectural features were that excellent. <coughs> and there are two theories behind it that uh, why it was cut from the top. So as you people uh, very well know that uh, the Rashtrakuta Empire was formed in 753 AD and its founder was uh, Danti Durga. So after Danti Durga you had Krishna 1 and then you had Druvadavarsha and various kings came. So I will tell you a little bit of Druvadavarsha and Amogavarsha later. So one theory is that it seems uh, this Danti Durga's wife, she had gone on a fast and uh, she had told him that only once the temple Kalasha, so Kalasha is what is placed on the top, right? So only once the temple's Kalasha is completed. So usually the Kalasha is the last thing which they keep. Only after I see this temple's Kalasha, only then I'm going to leave, uh, you know, discontinue my fast. But cutting this rock and, you know, uh, constructing a, such a great temple would take years and uh, that is the reason Danti Durga received an idea from his architects that the rock would be cut from the top and first they would make the Kalasha. So this is one aspect of it. And first Kalasha was made and Danti Durga's wife gave up the fast and one story goes on like that. The other uh, aspect is uh, some of the today's archaeologists uh, are of the opinion that uh, there is a great mystery behind this uh, temple construction. Because uh, <coughs> In almost a 20 kilometer radius in this Kailashna temple uh, at uh, Elora. So this uh, Rashtrakutas, they ruled a major part of Karnataka and parts of Maharashtra. So 20-30 kilometers <coughs> in the radius, uh, <coughs> today's archaeologists have gone <coughs> searching for the rock debris because the rock debris, whatever is cut, it has to be somewhere. They have not found any evidence. And uh, they say that in today's technology, to even shift that rock debris around 5 to 10 kilometers away from the temple, it seems it takes more than 100 years. So the big mystery is where has this rock debris gone? And uh, this particular structure here, the structure which uh, we can see in the center, this portion, 
the archaeologists are of the opinion that it, it seems this portion is uh, also visible from the stratosphere. So, some people say that uh, maybe somebody, uh, you know, aliens have come and constructed this. So, this is not proven, but uh, <coughs> the more accepted theory is about uh, Danti Durga's wife going on a fast and uh, the rock being <coughs> cut from the top. Now, uh, <coughs> as you people know very well, uh, the Elora has uh, a lot of caves. So, uh, it has uh, 34 uh, caves and uh, this uh, Elora it does not only have uh, this Kailashna temple. So, it uh, also uh, has uh, you know Buddhist structures, Jain structures and then in cave 16 you find uh, this uh, Kailashna temple. So, <coughs> coming back to some of the facts. So, this uh, particular Kailashna temple construction was started by Danti Durga, but it was completed during uh, the next uh, king. It was completed during uh, the next king and that is uh, King Krishna one. And as I have already told you located in Elora Maharashtra and uh, we have already discussed that it is the world's largest monolithic structure. Now, uh, <coughs> coming to some of uh, the features of Kailashna temple. So, this can also be uh, asked uh, in the mains examination. So, as I told you that uh, there are 34 caves uh, in Elora and uh, these caves are numbered as per their age and uh, these caves have both Buddhist also Jain and also Hindu structures. So, cave 13 to 29, there are Hindu caves. So, preliminary point of view, you need to know that uh, the how many caves are dedicated to Buddhist, how many are dedicated to Hindu structure, how many are dedicated to Jain and uh, only 5 caves are dedicated to Jain structures and in cave 16, we find this Kailashnath temple. So, it is interesting structures, first you have the Gopara, so Gopara is at the entrance gate. So, once you enter the entrance gate, you have uh, various other structures, Mantapas. So, uh, first one you have the Sabha Mantapa, the Sabha Griha. So, Sabha means as you know, this is the place where people meet for you know various functions, dance functions, whatever. So, that was uh, the place where people used to associate, get together. So, after the Sabha Mantapa, the Sabha Griha, you have the Nandi Mantapa where you know before you enter any uh, Shiva temple. So, first you have to pass through the Nandi, you have the Nandi Mantapa and then finally you have the Garbhaguri or the Garbhagriha where uh, the <coughs> Sanctum Sanctorum, so, so called where the main God's idol is being kept and above uh, the Garbhagriha you have a uh, Vimana. So, usually in the Dravidian temple architectures you find the pyramidal Vimana. So, uh, I would also give you a general outline of uh, the Dravidian uh, temple architecture. So, uh, this is uh, almost common for even Pallava temples, Satavana temples. So, even uh, this Kailashna temple has a lot of uh, uh, structural uh, points which I am giving you there. So, first uh, you have an outer compound. So, usually the exterior part of the outer compound, you would find beautiful carvings. Then you have a pyramidal entrance gate. So, this is uh, usually the Gopura, the Gopuram. Then you have a pathway to go around the temple. Then after this you have various mantapas like here we have mentioned the Sabha mantapa, then the Nandi mantapa, various mantapas and then finally you have the Garbhagudi where the main god is kept, Garbhagriha or the Garbhagudi and on top of the Garbhagudi you have 
the vimana and on this vimana finally your kalasha has been kept what is about the general architectural uh, features <coughs> so now as i told you uh, uh, danti durga was the founder and then krishna one who completed the temple so there is one particular inscription here so uh, known as the sajjan plate inscription so as per this inscription the next king who came was druvadavarsha and uh, it is said that uh, during druvadavarsha's period rashtrakutas had become a pan india power so they had brought both the pratiharas and uh, the palas under control and uh, in this inscription it is written that uh, his horses tasted the icy waters of himalayas and his elephants had tasted the holy waters of uh, river ganga and another important king who came in this succession was uh, amogavarsha so he is also very famous and very important uh, king uh, in the south of india so amogavarsha is also called as uh, you know ashoka of the south because uh, uh, he also like ashoka was following uh, more uh, peaceful uh, methods and uh, amogavarsha was also a very good writer so uh, he wrote both sanskrit and kannada works so uh, prashnottara ratnamallika was uh, amogavarsha's uh, sanskrit work and uh, kaviraja marga was amogavarsha's uh, uh, very important uh, kannada work so uh, rashtrakutas uh, are also very important for your preliminary uh, perspective and their rashtrakutas temple architecture uh, important even for your mains uh, perspective so uh, thank you students uh,